Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another video for Eve Echoes. Today's video is going to be slightly controversial if the title hasn't already generated enough clicks from people just going, what the hell do you think you're talking about, Benzi? Bear with me on this one, because today we're going to talk about the monetization situation in Eve Echoes and why you need to stop voting with your wallet, because that is such a ridiculous thing. And I know, we're all taught that that's how capitalism works, right? That if you want to, you know, have your say, you do so with your wallet. If you don't like something, you don't buy it. If you enjoy something, then you support it. And on that subject, if you do enjoy my content and want to support it, you can do so by heading across to patreon.com forward slash Captain Benzi, or by heading to my Redbubble merchandise store linked in the description. Damn, that was smooth. Anyway, whilst you're doing all of that as well, please take a moment to hit like before you start the angry comments in the comment section down below. Genuinely, I, as much as I say that, I would love to know what you guys think about this. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about why you should stop voting with your wallet and how Eve Echoes has got to the way it has. So let's start by opening up the store and talking about the situation. Well, first things first, of course, we have implants just being added to the game. And what happened on day one of implant launch? Well, you could buy a purple implant from the shop for about 45 US dollars, 45, 50 US dollars, or you could buy yourself one of the shiny gold ones for around about 100 to 120 dollars, depending on your currency. Now, that already sounds a little bit ridiculous, doesn't it? That, you know, you're going to spend $120 on an in-game item? Well, yes, people do this, and ultimately, it works. Now, for those of us who missed out on that first time around, missed out in inverted commas, because, like me, you don't have $120 to just splurge left, right, and center, there are now things in the store like these implant lucky chests, right? 60 Aurum each, or 100 Plex, so good, you can buy them with Plex at least. Um, this has a positive and a negative effect, which we'll come to later on if I remember to come back to it. But ultimately notice that the one that you can only buy with real world money is a little bit cheaper to the tune of what is essentially 40 Plex, because remember one Aurum exchanges for one Plex, so you can either spend 100 Plex on an implant lucky chest, or 60 Aurum on an implant lucky chest, but what are they? Well, let's have a look. If we open up the implant lucky chest, <coughs> excuse me a moment there. If we open up the implant lucky chest, you can see that there's a chance of obtaining your choice of advanced implant, basic or standard implant, along with a load of the neural compilers for the implants, some skill points and some gift IP. But what are actually the chances, right? Well, by European law and by very many other laws across the world, they do actually have to tell you what those chances are. Many people don't necessarily know this and they just go, ooh, imp advanced opt implant, that looks really cool. Yeah, there's a chance of me getting one of those. 60 Aurum, let's buy some of these. And you can buy up to 60 of these. So six time, uh, 60 times 60 is what? 3,600 Aurum. If you wanted to just buy that from the store, that's going to cost you the tune of about £140, $140, considering the pound's pretty much at parity with the dollar right now. But yes, anyway, let's have a look at what the actual chances are, right? If we tap on these little three dots, it gives us the chances. Now, remember, some of these all see, you know, all of these seem low. 15% chance for the highest rated item. It's because obviously everything adds up to 100% or thereabout. I haven't actually actually checked it on the maps. I'm assuming that's the case. But the most likely thing you are likely to get here is either 10,000 skill points or 150 gift IP, neither of which are overly exciting if we're being completely honest. You're then quite likely to get some crawl and neural compilers or depth or genesis. Those are all within sort of a similar range of 7.58%. Again, there's 300 gift IP there, which is a little bit of a booby prize, I kind of feel. And the basic opt implant is 6.06%, right? Now, if we go a little bit further down on this, there's the standard at 3.03, which is the purple one. If you're looking for that golden one, that is the advanced opt implant at 1.52%. There is not much chance at all. 
If you were to buy 60 of these, yeah, some people sit and go, well, 60 of those, that's 60 times not 1.5. No, that's not how probability works. It is entirely probable that you will buy all 60 and get nothing because it is a 1.52% chance every time you open the crate. Now, some people have said that they do have a sort of guarantee system going here that if you buy enough of them, you're guaranteed to get it. I call crap on that. I can see nothing around this here. Oh, no, there we are. It's at the bottom there. I call crap and I am immediately humbled by myself. An advanced opt-in plant is guaranteed within 60 times. So congratulations if you're willing to spend $140 on the game again. You are guaranteed to get that. Obviously, if you buy it piece by piece, then you might get it before then. You could theoretically get it in your first one. And that's how they hook you on these kind of things. That essentially, that it, it's that possibility of getting it. That you could spend as little as 60 Aurum, which is literally like £2, £2, $3. $3 could get you a gold level implant. That would be amazing, right? Yeah, but it's statistically unlikely. Then we have the Enforcer Infinite Core, another thing that is exclusive for Aurum. Only 1,500 Aurum, that is more than £46. If you buy the £46 bundle, you do not have enough money for this. Now, that's going to bring me to one final point as well before we go back to talking about Plex, and that's how Aurum is stacked. This implant material bundle looks really cool, right? It's reduced. 64 Aurum down from 160. Now, what's interesting to note about a 64 Aurum is that there is no way to buy two lots of that. If you were to buy the 25 Aurum pack, you're not going to get enough. In fact, you're going to have to buy four of those and get 75 Aurum, leaving you with a leftover remainder. Same if you go for the 125 Aurum. You're going to look at that and go, oh, that gets me one, and it doesn't quite get me two because 64 plus 64 is 128. You are going to be a teensy tiny three Aurum left, which means you're going to sit there and say to yourself, well, I'm going to have to buy the £4.39 and the 89 pence one anyway in order to get two of them. What happens if I just buy the 8.99 one? Well, then that's 265 divided by 64. And you see what I mean here. I'm just talking about this 125 one. They could have had it just go down to 60. Heck, they could have had it go down to 62 Aurum for the sale. And that would have given you the possibility to buy 125 Aurum and get two of these with that purchase. Not so, if you buy that 125, you can still only get one of these. You're going to have like 60 Aurum available, uh, left over, 61 Aurum left over. You're going to be, what, three Aurum short. And that is designed purposefully to make you kind of miss out on what you're doing so that you spend more. It's this little sub thing that, you know, you could just go 125 plus 25, but at that point, I may as well go for the 265. That is how this, that is how this works. That is arguably predatory. Well, not arguably predatory, that is predatory, but ultimately that's how businesses work. It's the same as when you walk into a supermarket and you're looking at things like buy one, get one free, or 30% off with additional purchases and stuff like this. I'll never forget going with a friend of mine one morning. We'd gone down to the seafront for breakfast, um, and on the way back, he decided he really fancied some orange juice. So he walked into the supermarket, and he came out with three boxes of orange juice. And I said, why did you get three? And he said, oh, it's three for the price of two, so I saved money. So like, you only wanted one. And he was like, yeah, but it's three for the price of two, so I saved money. It's like, you didn't save money. You bought, th you bought two items. You paid them twice as much as you were going to pay. The orange juice was £1.50 for the box. You've spent £3.00. You only wanted to spend £1.50. And I really couldn't get this into Zach's poor head. But... That's basically how economics works. Now, finally, before we go back to the question of why you should stop voting with your wallet, let's have a look at the implant lucky chest, the fact that it's got that Plex and Aurum. Now, this is good news and it's bad news. On one hand, it's great that people who are only, you know, earning in-game currency um, can still buy this. Obviously, you'd have to pay 100 rather than 60. Um, it's a slightly more expensive way, theoretically, of doing it, but it is a way that is possible without having to pay actual money. If you've got enough ISK, you can dump it into Plex and off you go. 
Now the difficulty here is you only get five of these. You can only buy five of them. And even though it still has that guarantee of 60 times, just he scrolls to the bottom quickly to check before making an ass out of himself again. Even though it has that there, you're only gonna be able to buy five of these, not the 60, which again is a little bit deceptive. But why is it kind of a bad thing? Well, one of the basic laws of economics is the law of supply and demand. If supply and demand are unmatched, then prices shift. If, de if supply outweighs demand, then prices go down. If there's more of the item than people are actually buying, then the price begins to crash. Think of it this way. When you go to the, uh, the market in EVE or the auction house in World of Warcraft, if you're trying to sell a load of stuff on the market and there's a load of people already there, what do you do? you undercut, don't you? You make yours slightly cheaper. And then if it doesn't sell, then the next person who comes along looks at your items and undercuts it for slightly cheaper. So the law of supply and demand shows that when supply outweighs demand, then the price goes down. When demand goes up, however, that is always going to cause a price increase. If people are demanding more of a product, you can suddenly start charging more for it because it will sell at higher prices. Now, whenever anything goes on the store here for Plex, that means there is now an increase in demand for Plex. And if Plex demand increases, so does the price of Plex. And if we have a little look at that for the moment, Spendix isk for the price of Plex. Plex is currently sitting at around 3.2 million a pop. That is almost as high as it has ever been in EVE. And every time that something comes along that is going to require, you know, suggest for people to buy a lot of Plex, then ultimately that is going to cause the Plex prices to increase. This means that actually things that, you know, are for Plex in the shop tend to cause the pr uh, Plex prices to go up higher. Things that are Aurum in the shop tend to actually cause the Plex price to go down. Because again, imagine you've bought the, uh, this bundle here, that 64, 64, you're gonna have some Aurum over. And a lot of people, I know it doesn't make sense to a lot of people watching this, you're gonna sit there and go, ah, oh, people don't do it. Yes, they do. Ultimately, if uh, most people, if they have a little bit of Aurum left over, automatically transfer the remainder into Plex. They don't think about it, they just go, oh, well, I'm not gonna buy anything else, so yeah, I may as well turn that into Plex and get myself some ISK that I can use in-game. And most people do this. That puts some Plex back onto the market, which increases the supply in relation to demand and helps reduce the cost of Plex. So yeah, ultimately just a brief little aside there to talk about how the Plex markets work and how supply and demand works. It's also worth noting that Plex as well is basically set, not in any sort of one-to-one -one direct ratio, but the more money the top players can earn isk-wise in the game, the higher Plex will be, because they will then be able to purchase Plex more um, in order to buy their monthly Omega and things like that. So it does, the, high, the, the more the top players can earn, the higher Plex goes as well. Also, with the recent bans on Russia and India in Eve Echoes, two rather large whale markets that would buy Aurum and then dump it into Plex. Um, again, you get a situation where that's caused the Plex shrink as well, and that's why Plex is much more expensive than basically it's ever been. But this brings me back to the final question, or rather the original question, of why you should stop voting with your wallet. Well, the simple fact is this. I'm well aware that people say, oh, by voting with my wallet, I can let the developers know that I disagree with things like the Sun Chaser funding program, and I don't want to be doing this, and I don't want to be buying this. I'm going to show them that I'm, you know, I'm not involved in this. I'm not interested in it. They're not getting my money. When people turn around and do things like boycott the game, um, stop buying Omega, let's drop down to alpha status, there are two problems with that, and it's one that they never really work, that most people, even the people who suggest the boycott, kind of tend to secretly, you know, we've seen this a lot with things like World of Warcraft um, and other games as well, where boycotts like this have happened. The people calling for the boycotts tend to just keep paying anyway because they don't want to miss out. And I'm well aware that the people on Reddit saying, oh, I would totally cancel my Omega. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, they're all 100% genuine. Totally, honestly, I get it. They're all 100% genuine. Not a single one of those is talking out of their backside. Um, but the simple fact is, it doesn't work anyway. Think about it this way. If you're a business, you 
are a business works basically by selling things to its customers, right? And to make more money, you sell things to your customers that they want, right? You're with me so far. Can you see where logically this is going? Logically, if you run a business and some of your customers stop buying things and others are still buying, you're going to con it's a losing battle to try and get more people to just come back and buy. Look, I used to run a games workshop. My job wasn't selling plastic cocaine to people. My job was basically teaching new people all about the hobby. My job was to get folks off the street, kids, their parents, adults, off the street, run an intro game, run a painting demonstration completely for free to show them what the hobby was about, to try and recruit them to the hobby, which I'm aware sounds like a cult, doesn't it? Um, but that was what I was aiming to do, and it's an interesting business strategy. If you're a company like Games Workshop that are super niche, because let's be fair, the prices are ridiculous. They're ridiculous because Games Workshop want the highest quality available and they will, you know, go to crazy lengths in order to do that. Seriously, if you knew what it takes to make an actual plastic frame for a single freaking Space Marine, how long it takes to make, how the tooling process works. I've taught the factory, I've spoken to the designers many, many times. I know these things and my God, it is insane. Um, you, you get why they charge such a high price. They're not going after a large audience. They're going after a very small, niche audience and just trying to make their money off that and that is what Echoes is doing now too. When you turn around and say well I'm not going to give Netties my money, ultimately all the whales continue to and so as a business Netties looks at you not paying and looks at the whales who are paying and who do you think they're going to make content for? Yeah, exactly. They're going to continue making content for the people who are willing to part with money for the game. It makes logical sense, right? I'm not talking crazy talk here. If you are a business, you are going to supply things that your customers want. And if half of your customers say, oh, we don't want to buy from you anymore, then you're going to find ways to support and try and get more money out of the customers who do remain loyal. And it's a really self-defeating, self-consuming way of doing things. And what we've seen basically since Eve Echoes launched is exactly that. Because people have stopped playing, they've stopped paying for Omega, they've stopped voting with their wallet in inverted commas, they've been voting with their wallet, they've decided they're not going to pay for the game anymore. So NetEase looks at the people who are paying for the game and looks at what they're buying. So when Illusory Ghost or Neon Rain is ludicrously like expen you know, expensive, but it works for them and they make tons of money off it, they go, well, that worked, let's do it again. When we have things like the Sun Chaser event program that people, as much as all the content creators are sitting there going, this is basically a scam. People are sitting there going, oh, it's crazy, it's awesome, yeah. And people spend into it, and they do. People really, really do. When you say that you're voting with your wallet, you are handing power over to the people who have the money to spend. If you're saying that your votes are up for purchase, then essentially you're saying that people with more money than you are going to get more say, right? Do you understand how that works? I know I'm being really condescending here, but I've had this discussion so many times with so many different people saying, oh, we just need to vote with our wallet, and I get it. I get it, I'm not calling you idiots, I'm calling you ignorant, there's a difference. Ignorant isn't a problem, to be ignorant of something isn't a bad thing, we're all ignorant of things. I'm ignorant of how a lot of biology works and just crazy things. I'm ignorant of how a car actually works. If you open up the front of a car or a motorbike or something, I can kind of point to the dipstick if it's got one. I can say, well that's the engine, that's where the oil goes and that's the radiator, maybe. but. That's about it. I know the basic functionings of how it works. I know there are pistons and stuff that drives it, but I'm ignorant of how a car works because it's something I never learnt. And economics are one of these really twisted backward things that people assume works really logically. And it does work logically, but it's a very twisted and specific kind of logic that isn't necessarily apparent to people. And it can often be counterintuitive, especially when the media and governments start to twist how they talk about economics. 
Netflix. If you look at Margaret Thatcher, for better or for worse, and please don't stop the video, I'm not getting all political here, I'm merely explaining a simple fact in regards to economics, started using phrases like taxpayer money. Oh, we're paying for these services with taxpayer money. There's no such thing as taxpayer money. People think that taxes come out of their pocket and go into some government bank account that then gets divvied up and spent, uh, spent out on different things. That's not how it works. That's the exact opposite of how taxes actually work. Government spends money into existence and taxes are just used as money uh, sinks. They destroy money from public circulation in order to keep inflation down. Look into how tax actually works and it will surprise you. It's one of those major things of economics that people think they understand and they simply don't because that's just how they've been taught to think. And it's the wrong way of looking at it, it's not how it works. And that's kind of the same when it comes to this kind of stuff. If you want to, you know, have your say, you need to be paying in Echoes. And I know that's really twisted or you need to leave altogether. But even then, leaving altogether, all you're doing is basically still handing the power. I don't know. There's not a good way to handle this. The purpose of this video is basically just to give you a little bit of economical education into how these practices work, into why netties price things the way they do compared to the Aurum costs, why there are so many whale events in games, because if the whales pay, then they're gonna keep doing that kind of thing. And basically what we're seeing is that netties are going after a particularly niche group. And that group is, it's like the ring in Apex Legends or PUBG. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and more and more people are finding themselves outside of that ring. If currently, if you are not a capital pilot, then you're almost entirely outside of that ring. Even battleship pilots are beginning to fall off the sides other than nanocores. Nanocores the one things that are still kind of holding primarily battleship pilots in there whilst everything else is beginning to shift towards capitals. I swear by the time we have high angular weaponry added to the game that metagenesis of, into, uh, of Eve Echoes into a capital centric game will be complete and I know people complain about this. Benzie you hate capitals. I don't hate capitals. I really don't. I don't like flying them personally. I think they're really cool ships. I just can see where this goes. I'm looking at this path and I'm looking at where this path has come from. I can see the direction it's going in because so many other games have done this and because I have an understanding of how economics works. So please, I don't know what the answer is, but stop telling people to vote with their wallet. It doesn't hurt netties. At the worst, it shuts down the game. At the best, it does nothing. Like genuinely, it changes nothing or enough people do it and the game basically becomes a red mark in netties' book and they cancel everything. And I don't know. I don't know what to suggest. Maybe you have some ideas in the comment section down below, but please stop talking about voting with your wallet because all you are doing is admitting that people with more money get more say. Anyway, folks, that's about everything for today's video. It's a bit of an unusual one for Eve Echoes. Hopefully you've learned something here. I would love to have a conversation about this in the comment section down below and on Discord. Remember, people commenting on my videos are in for a chance of winning a month of Combo Omega, as are two people active in the public channels of my Discord, linked in the description of this video. Anyway, thank you for listening to me ramble on about economics and the state of the game. Hopefully it's given you some ideas or allowed you to look at things a little bit more critically in certain situations. Let me know your thoughts. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.